Bear with me, fellas. This one's gonna be pretty tough to get through. But hey, at least we got packs. I have no voice. Now, in the last episode, we recapped the worst Hut Champs run I've had in quite some time. Yo, suck! A monumental feat of blowing five two-goal leads. But hey, maybe the packs will bail us out. All right, here we go. Four on the board. Let's see what we got. I'll be honest with you. These are probably a collection of the worst packs I've had this entire year, which we were probably due for because we've been pulling nothing but icons and X factors and whatnot. However, I do want to reiterate Mega Players Packs from the Hut Champs Collectible Rewards is still by far the best value because all of that fodder goes into everything that is of value to make even if you don't pull anything. I have five team builders done already completely free to play, and this essentially almost got me to my sixth team builder by just doing these four mega packs. Now on Tuesday, our newest XP set gave us a power-up icon choice pack that was kind of scuffed when it first launched, but afterwards had the ability to pull any icon in the game, including Mario, Gretzky, and Howe. So I used a lot of my gold non-NHLers that I got in the mega packs I just opened to try and get super lucky with either an 85 headliner or one of the ultimates. Come on! Not good. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Just not Bobby Clark, man. Well. So we took Henry Richard, and I'm inching closer towards getting more of the headliners done. I was also able to do another icon choice pack. This time I went with Boria Salming, as I'm inching closer to trying and getting Jean Beliveau finished. So all in all, made some progress on the ultimate icon. But then it was time to hop back into Rivals as we waited for our rewards. And I've been trying to fire from the point more. The man I was matched up with did not anticipate that I will slam home those gifts. Now down to one of the third, and Neuendijk just continues to prove he's one of the best cards in the game as I shoot it right through his goaltender, and I have no idea how this went in. Maybe Snipe is goaded. What the f was that? Now tied at two, our newest team builder, Luke Robitaille, lifts one upstairs and snipes one. I haven't really got him going, but his shot has been pretty electric, and he gets a big one here for me. Now again, moments later. Willie Nylander fires one, rebound goes right to Claude Giroux, and we are buzzing that Willie Nylander was a nice pickup. Also something I've been trying to work on this week is reverse hitting. It is something that I think everyone should start to get used to. It's very easy once you figure out the timing, essentially right when someone's coming at you. You just click in the right stick on total control, and while you will lose the puck, I'd say about 70% of the time, you'll usually just knock it forward and it won't be a rush against. But I'm able to hold on to the dub here and roll right into our Rivals Rewards. All right, time for more Rivals Rewards. We're going to do untradeable because we like fun and see what we can get. A couple of big pulls. Wouldn't mind like the 88 Kucherov or the new Mackenzie Blackwood would be sweet. Uh, let's get after it. Let's open up our packs and see what we got. All right, here we go. We'll start with the elite pack down at the bottom. Looking for something. Any, I mean, hey, team builders are good. We'll take it. Yeah, give me all the team builder cards. Come on now. 85 Victor Hedman. Not bad. Kind of want to try him out. He's got shut down. We're going to get a big one here. Kadri. Come on, man. Something cool. Something cool. I mean, we definitely have another team builder. Oh, let's go! Yes, sir! Bailed with the 88 Quinn Hughes. You know, abilities are kind of cheeks. He is a fast boy, and we will take it. Okay, not bad at all right there. Let's go. Bailed out. Bailed out. <laughs> dude, it's every week. Every week. I mean, dude, that's nuts, man. Every week. 80 Dude, what a pack! All right, now, to be fair, my icons have all been cheeks. I suspect Bobby Clark, but let's have some fun, you know? Why not Gretzky? Let's have some fun. This is the pack. This is the all-time sleeves pack. Here we go. Here we go. I mean, uh, I don't have a maid yet, so it saves 40k. 
It saves 40k. So after we got all of our rewards, it was time to hop back into Rivals yet again to start working towards next week's packs. Now, I gotta say, since the patch, the way that Rivals is played, especially at the high end, it is getting a little rough in the sense that we're now about a month and a half into the game, and obviously the go-to goals and ways to play are starting to kind of shake out. And this is definitely more prevalent at the high end of the game, but I used to use Circle or B since the launch of the game on Total Control, and that no longer gives me a hit animation at all. Like, I can't knock anyone off the puck. So it's forced me to use the hit stick by holding down to charge up a hit and then up to get a big hit animation. Problem with that is that you get a charging penalty essentially every time that you do that. On top of that, I'm also noticing that only shove checks where just flicking up with the right stick are effective, really. And in this play here, well, I mean, we've all seen how the go-to ways to score and it's becoming kind of ugly. Something else I'm really starting to notice is that patience on offense and especially on defense is something that really separates the good from the great players. In this situation right here, every time my player switch, I'm immediately running at where I think my opponent is going to be and it ends up pulling me way out of position. If I were to just switch and then sit still and wait for my opponent to move, I'm literally going to be in the lane every single time. And then I just throw this puck right into my own net. Again, I just want to illustrate why having someone with gold quick draw is so impactful in this game. You can really mess with your opponent if you understand the counters and everything like that. Most people, when they see someone with gold quick draw, will immediately tie up. The counter to a tie up is a stick lift. So almost every single time until my opponent beats me, I'll just go backhand straight back. And because you've got gold quick draw, you snap it way faster. And this is a go to play off the face off looking for a tip. But in this instance, I end up with a rebound and an easy tap in. So after this game, I inch closer to ultimate so far during the week. And I'm stuck around that 1900 skill rating which in my opinion is pretty piss poor because I expect way more out of myself, but hey, we'll get there. Now, I also thought I would talk about the new next-gen event and some of the cards that I'm kind of interested in. I've got to say I'm getting kind of bored of my team right now, but because progression has been slowed so much this season, which I think is a good thing, we want to stay away from 99 HUD as long as we can, the downfall to this is that you will receive a few events in a row where the master sets are the same overalls, and if... A lot of the cards don't have the most effective abilities or jacked up skater ratings. They kind of fall flat, even though I don't think they should in the end. It's just that how we perceive them. When it comes to this event and the cards that I'm going to be looking at, Brock Faber, to be honest with you, is probably the only one from week one that I'm thinking about making, as he is essentially a more defensive version of Sergei Zubov's team builder, and I really don't feel like using Zubov's team builder, to be honest with you. I'm just going to make it so that I can cash him in later on for the 90 overall version of the team builder set. I'm also considering Adam Fantilli because... I really like Adam Fantilli as a player. I've gotten to meet him in real life. He's a great guy. And while he doesn't have elite skating, he does have silver unstoppable force. The only issue is that his face-off rating is really low. On top of that, with how this new event is going to work, the Calder finalists and the Calder trophy winner will have all of their upgrade tiers unlocked, which essentially means that if Fantilli or Leo Carlson or Connor Bedard, who we can expect would be in week number two, if they end up winning the Calder or getting nominated, then at least it guarantees you a shot at at getting a 99 later on in the game. Now I need to remind everyone, you will have to pay for these upgrade tiers. They just unlock for all of these cards. So while I do think that this is a great format, just understand that it is not a free 99 if you pick the right one. I also need to point out that the objectives are absolutely brutal in terms of the time commitment to get them. And you don't essentially get a free master set player in this. You only get four power-up collectibles, not six. Which, in my opinion, is brutal and just kind of inexcusable by EA. Every event should give you a free master set player, even if it takes you a long time. But because week one is kind of mediocre in terms of the master set players, and we know that week two is going to have some bangers, I would just go really slow with this because there is really no rush. Save all the power-up collectibles. That way, when week two happens, you can make a decision if you want to upgrade one one of them. So I want to thank you for sitting through 10 minutes of someone who sounds like they've been smoking for 50 years. I'm hoping I'll be all good by next episode. Have a good one, fellas.